Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sean Dugan. I'm the Assistant Town Administrator in Easton, and I wanted to welcome you all to the Red Mill Road Water Treatment Plant ribbon cutting. Um, I, I've been, I'm relatively new to town. I've been here for about nine months, and so I haven't seen, um, I actually, the, my prior community didn't have a water treatment plant. So seeing this come to, um, to fruition has been really impressive, and, and that's credit to uh, the amazing team that we have here in Easton. Um, and a really important part of that team is um, is our first speaker, our town administrator, Connor Reed. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I know folks want to get inside and check the plant out more and have some burgers, so we'll try to be pretty brief here and do a quick ribbon cutting of all you, so thanks for coming. We're excited to kick off uh, National Drinking Water Week here with all of you celebrating Easton's latest water treatment success story here at the Red Mill Road uh, Treatment Plant. Director Field's gonna make a couple of remarks about the treatment plant today, uh, which removes iron and manganese from our water supply. So I'd like to focus my remarks instead on thanking our residents and the professionals here at Easton Public Works. For 40 years, National Drinking Water Week has highlighted the importance of safe drinking water and it recognizes the tireless efforts of water professionals who keep it flowing around the clock. So let's give a round of applause to Easton DPW and our water division professionals here today and at work every day, 365 days a year to protect and distribute our most valuable resource. So whether building new schools, roads, sewers, or water treatment plants, Easton's been extraordinarily busy in the past several years, stepping up to meet a broad array of challenges across the community. It takes a team of excellent public works professionals and the right elected leadership to guide these projects, but none of it is possible without the consistent support of our residents who have repeatedly shown up, they've gotten engaged, and they voted to fund millions in essential infrastructure throughout Easton. So without you, we wouldn't be here today. So I'd like to thank all of our residents who are here today and who vote to support these projects. Thank you so much. To do these projects the right way, Easton needs a team who could design, build, and operate them. We are ready to meet this challenge thanks to the exceptional public works team that we have here. Director Field, who's gonna speak in one moment, leads an extraordinary department. And this project exemplifies the Easton Water Division's excellence. I'd be remiss not to specifically recognize and thank all of our Water Division staff here today and particularly Water Operations Manager, Rich Tierney, who some of you folks have met giving tours Rich joined the town in 2020 and has worked tirelessly for years straight without fanfare and out of the spotlight to manage and design the construction of not only this $15.6 million treatment plant, but $12 million in treatment facilities for a PFAS removal at other wells around Easton. So let's share a round of applause for Dave, Rich, as well as the engineering, GIS, water treatment and construction professionals of Easton DPW who always step up and make it happen. Thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming out, especially those that maybe stayed up a little too late watching the Bruins. Uh, as Connor mentioned, today is the start of Drinking Water Week. So we thought it'd be fitting to host a ribbon cutting today uh, in an open house to uh, basically commemorate the completion of this uh, treatment plant behind me uh, and celebrate the newest piece of drinking water infrastructure for the town and to recognize the accomplishments of the Eastern Water Division. Safe, reliable drinking water is something that most people take for granted. Uh, usually uh, when we turn on the faucet, we expect water to come out. Uh, and understandably, most of us don't think about it too much unless there's a problem. Uh, but Drinking Water Week is a, a time for us to reflect on the uh, critical role water plays in our daily lives and to recognize the dedicated professionals of the Eastern Water Division who work day in and day out to provide that water. The Red Mill Road uh, water treatment plant is now complete and this follows years of planning, design and construction. I just wanna thank the team members that made that happen. Our designer, environmental partners, our owner's project manager, Ty and Bond, our general contractor, Hart Engineering, our applications engineer, Wooden and Curran, and the Eastern Public Works and Water Division staff, especially Rich Tierney, Operations Manager, uh, Josh Ford, Water Supervisor, Jeff Clunan, Treatment Plant Operator, Matt Groschadel, Civil Engineer, and Greg Swan, Deputy Director of Public Works. Let's thank them.
at the conclusion of these remarks today, we'll have a brief ribbon cutting ceremony, and then we'll open up the plant to more tours. We also have the water division preparing some hamburgers and hot dogs. We also have a touch a truck going on. Uh, so feel free to explore the plant, ask questions, and uh, enjoy some food and uh, explore our trucks. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Select Board Chair, Dottie Fulginetti. Thank you. Thanks for being here today, everyone. Um, before I make a couple of comments, I'd like to invite up our Senator, Walter Timothy, to say a few words. Hey, good morning. Good morning, and thank you very much, uh, Select Woman Chair, Dottie Fulginetti, and uh, members of our board, and of course, Dave and Rich. Uh, this is a uh, what a magnificent facility. I mean, this is impressive. And what a fitting time with uh, Clean Drinking Water Week to celebrate this across the nation. Uh, to touch on Connor's remarks just a moment ago, but thank you very much to Craig and Jen and the whole entire select board and you, Madam Chair. And Dave and Rich, uh, the people of the town of Easton have once again stepped up under the leadership of their select board and the department heads. This is incredibly important for all of us. What this will do under the leadership of Dave and Rich. I thank you very much for each and every one of you, what this will do for the citizens of this town. This is a model for what we should all be doing across the Commonwealth. So congratulations to the residents for getting involved. Congratulations to our select board. And if Dave and Rich could please come forward. Congratulations, Dave and Rich and thank your you. team. This is for each and every one of you in uh, the Public Works and the Water Division. This week I offered this citation uh, it's on behalf of uh, Jerry Cassidy and myself and Carol Doherty, and of course, representing Jerry Cassidy. We have Bridget Plouffe who runs Jerry's office. Bridget, thank you very much. This citation reads as follows. It's a Senate citation. It's an official document recorded in the records of the Senate forever. It reads as follows, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <coughs> Excuse me. To your point, Dave, too late watching the boards. <laughs> Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate official citation, be it known the Massachusetts State Senate, hereby extends its congratulations to the great town of Easton, our Department of Public Works, and our residents specifically, under the leadership of our select board, in recognition of the official opening of the Red Mill Water Road treatment plant and for Easton's commitment to ensuring safe and clean water to their community, which is especially noteworthy on this important week across the country. And be it further known, the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. As Rich, you and I talked about this, this project will be maintained. And it will be maintained well because Easton always does everything first class for their residents. Let this citation be duly signed by the President of the State Senate and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. Uh, Dave and Rich and Madam Chair, it's been signed by our Senate President, Karen Spilka, attested to by our Clerk, Michael Hurley, and offered by one very proud State Senator, myself, Walter F. Timothy. So thank you, Chair Fulginetti. Thank you to the residents and Dave and Rich. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Timothy. Uh, he's been a good friend to us for a long time in Easton. Um, moving on to other things soon, but we want to extend our appreciation for all that he's done to support our town. I want to thank everybody in town. Uh, we do, like Dave said, we do rely on clean drinking water to just come out automatically. Easton's had a long history of having exceptional drinking water. And to be able to have these treatment facilities to ensure that uh, there's clean water for our town for years to come. The people in this town that vote for it, support it, and make this happen. Um, all of the people, our staff that work so well, um, I appreciate all of it. I know I'm standing between everyone and the cheeseburgers, so I'll just say thank you for being here today, and uh, we'll get on with the ribbon cutting. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Clunan. I am the uh, licensed operator for the uh, new water treatment plant in the town of Easton. Um, this is an iron and manganese uh, process that we're using here with four uh, presser filters. Currently, we're, we're in the uh, treatment um, control room. This is where we um, this is where we operate the plant. We see our what's going on with the town. Like right here, this is SCADA. 
Uh, this is our wells right here. And this is the overview screen for the treatment plant. As you can see, there's four pressure vessels. Currently, we're not running. Um, these are our wells that feed the vessels uh, and the piping. It kind of gives you an outlay of how the treatment process works. Um, but this is where we, we do a lot of our chemical adjustments and um, this is where we do our lab work. So over here, uh, this is a spectrometer. This is where we check and see our raw water uh, what we have for iron and manganese, our pHs, our chlorines, um, and it also see we were able to see the process and how the filtration is working uh, at the end of the line. So currently we get around a 0.2 for manganese, and after the process is finished, we have no detects. So this is the new filtration system is doing its job, and we're actually very very excited about that. This is the lab sink. This is. Um, this is a lab sink where raw water influent comes in. This is our oxidized water when it get hit, gets hit with chlorine and um, sodium hy hydroxide. This is our combined filter effluent. This is basically our clear well. And this is the finished water. So if we need to do samples, this is where we take it. So these are the storage tanks for our chemical, um, for where we keep our chemical. Um, they're delivered in tanker trucks and pumped into the building. Uh, this chemical we don't use currently yet, so I'm not gonna give you an overview of it. It's, it's not as important in the process, but this is not sodium hypochlorite, it's chlorine. It's a high strength chlorine. Uh, this is the oxidizer for the iron and manganese. This oxidizes iron and manganese. Uh, and throughout the process, if you can see the green pipe, and then as you travel, it becomes light blue, and you have the dark blue pipe above it. The light blue pipe is, is color-coded for us because that's where the oxidization process happens. Chlorine brings out iron and manganese. It, it, it oxidizes it. So once we travel down the line of the blue pipe, in order to get contact time for the iron and manganese to, to come out, to oxidize, it goes outside of the building, wraps around the building, and then comes back in on the other side of the building for contact time. After that contact time has occurred, a certain amount of the chlorine has been eaten up. So this is where the oxidized water comes back in the building after its con contact time. It travels up and then it goes into the filters in the top there. At any time, we'll run three filters. One filter will be in lag. It'll be in. It'll be dormant. So as it enters the top of the filters, there's there's 18 inches of silica sand, 18 inches of uh, green sand plus. Once that oxidized water hits the green sand plus, the green sand plus takes away the iron and manganese. And then as it filters lower, there's other levels of of stone, smaller to bigger, in the bottom of this. And once we filtered it, actually, see, you notice how the color has now turned darker blue. It's, it's potable water now, all right, since it's come out there to the bottom. Now we go on to the other side. Once the filter process has been complete, we, and we, the water from the bottom travels on this top train and then comes down into the combined filter effluent. So it's gonna, this water is now gonna travel down here. And if you look down the line, that's where the combined filter effluent enters the clear well. And our clear well is basically a small storage tank. Um, and then we're gonna have to go back on the other side, but it's basically a small storage tank for our high water, our high lift um, motors and pumps to pump to the system. So we have entered the clear well and now after the clear well, the clear well looks like um, basically a, a labyrinth. It is baffled, it comes back, and it, it, it looks like a maze. So the water has time for contact time for the chlorine and it gets very technical with the DEP. We have to have certain amount of time before it hits the first customer. 
So that's why the clear well is baffled the way it is. And that's why we have a certain amount of water under there. It's approximately 70,000 gallons. So once the clear well has done its baffling process, it enters here. This is the end of the line of the clear well. And this is where our high speed pumps, okay. this is where our high speed pumps take the water from the clear well and send it to our residents without manganese and iron. <laughs> That's it.